Welcome to some and welcome back to a few. I ramble review. It's what I do. And today I'm here with The Savior Sister by Jenna Morassi, which I am trying to get in frame properly. Sorry, I do not know what is up with that. Okay, <laughs> so if you follow my Goodreads, you will know I actually reviewed this book way earlier in the year. I say way earlier. I think it's only been a couple of months. Uh, I originally received the electronic... Um, advanced readers copy of this book from the author. I loved it, gave it five stars. Um, not too much of a surprise given how much I loved the first book, honestly. Uh, but there were some things I specifically wanted to say about this book, and I was waiting to make this video until I could get a hold of the physical copy, um, just to see that for sure it held up to being as awesome a quality as the first one, and it did. Lovely cover art, great binding, one of the things I had not noticed until recently and got super excited about was the barcode. Oops, there we go. The barcode for the book is also directly on the hardcover, not just on the dust jacket. And if you catalog your books, you will know what a godsend that really is. <laughs> if not, just trust me, it's awesome. I would like to thank every author that does that. You make my life so much easier. <laughs> uh, that said, the Savior Sister is a companion book to The Savior's Champion, following the same time period as The Savior's Champion did. Give or take a few days on both sides of the equation. But it is told from a completely different point of view. In The Savior Sister, we follow the female main character of our first book. Le uh, sorry. Mouth called Layla as she is trying to figure out what to do about this competition, about the labyrinth, and just about her situation as a whole. I can't say a ton without giving away major spoilers, and I do want to keep this as spoiler free a review as possible. Uh, that said, some trigger warnings. Um, the trigger warnings are somewhat spoilery, so if you want to go through this book with no spoilers at all, skip ahead until I put my hand back down. Spoilers starting now. There is a non-consensual kiss scene in this story. Um, it is a different non-consensual kiss than the one I mentioned in my first review that Tobias dealt with. Um, our main female character has a much less traumatic non-consensual kiss situation occur where the other character does seem to be much more apologetic and realize that they have done something bad. Um, that said, it is still a major trigger for me, and I know it is probably triggering for others. Um, there is another scene that could be potentially triggering for some people, um, where we learn how the uh, stone figures in the Savior's Garden thing that they come through uh, when they're coming out of the trials, uh, come to life, uh, involving uh, that the Savior's blood has to be put on the statues or is used somehow to awaken the statues. I'm slightly unclear about that. The scene is really, really traumatic. The It, it really goes to show just how messed up the Savior's father really is. Um and that they acquired her blood for this purpose in a very unnecessarily demeaning way, um, holding her down. Um, and honestly, doing this when she's coming from a dead sleep. Like, uh, I will not say more on the matter. Uh, if that sounds like something that could potentially trigger you, you might want to skip this installment and continue onward. <laughs> All right. Spoilers done. <laughs> All right, back to my non-spoily review. There are several things I really, really, really liked about this book. For one, we are following the character I wanted us to be following from the beginning. I was way more interested in the Savior's sister than I ever was in Tobias. Like, Tobias is cool. I like his motivations, I like his inner dialogue, 
and I like how cool he is to our leading lady. But I was always way more intrigued by what she was up to, and so by default I was bound to like this book more than the first, because it's following the character that I wanted to know more about. We are given more of the limitations and structures of the Savior's powers and exactly what they are. We are introduced to a new power that is not mentioned in the first book, and I really liked that. Um, I liked seeing the motivations and character connections within the court, especially where issues of trust were concerned. That was fascinating to me. Um, I was absolutely shocked and dismayed to realize how young the savior had to realize that she was in danger and how long she's been having to scheme and backstab just to get by and stay alive. Um, of course, because this is a companion novel and it is following the same time period as the savior's champion did, there's not as many surprises, I guess. But there's definitely a lot more depth and nuance to the understanding you'll have of events from within the Savior's Champion. I would say you could read The Savior's Sister by itself and still get enjoyment out of it. I do think reading The Savior's Champion first is worthwhile. Um, was there anything I didn't particularly like outside of the trigger warnings? I don't really think so. Um, if I remember correctly, I did mention in my Goodreads review that there are some points where it is hard to tell if our leading lady is thinking something in her head or if she's actually saying it out loud. There are some points where it is hard to tell if she is dreaming something or fantasizing something or it's actually happening. Um, this is especially pertinent near the end. I don't know if that's just a fault in me as a reader, or if it is something others will struggle with in the story. Um, but it is a thing. I did really enjoy, because this story continues a few minutes beyond the end of The Savior's Champion, it feels like it reaches a much more satisfying end point. Like, I am actually satisfied now to wait for the third book to come out, and... I'm not chomping at the bit, going nuts, like, when is it? I, I can wait, I know. Like, it's cool. Um, which I say that, but watch, in two months I will be going nuts wondering when the third book's coming out. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all I really wanted to say. Uh, the Savior Sister by Jenna Rassi is an awesome book. If you like dark fantasy, if you like dark fantasy romance especially, check it out. And thank you to Jenna Marassi for allowing me to read the e-arc and to review the book early on Goodreads. I hope everyone is having an awesome evening, and whenever you watch this, feel free to comment. Bye!